Manhattan basketball coach John Gallagher searching the country for seven-footers and guys who could hit jumpers. And maybe a little bit of that defense, too, joins us on 365 Sports. That wouldn't be bad, huh? A seven-footer, athletic, shot blocker, guards who can shoot. Don't tell them. I, I, are you talking about our recruiting database? Be quiet. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> All right, so, John, there was the Oakland, and there were a couple of others. Yale in that opening two rounds of the tournament. But in the end, it seems like it's pretty uh, – innocuous as far as uh, a Cinderella NC State's a great story obviously but it seems like it's uh, a lot of people we thought maybe based on their seating would be there are there what do you what do you think may have happened just the better teams all kept winning you know what I think this year uh, just played out the way you know the, the, the higher seeds just I mean especially the one seeds are just better I mean they're 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 clear cut better um, it, it, it's just a very, uh, weird time in college basketball and college athletics. And, um, you know, it's, it's really, 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 um, I, difficult is an understatement because, I mean, it's great uh, and it's challenging, but those four year or three three year or two year program like you have to you have to rinse and repeat. That's why what UConn's doing is impressive. Even what Purdue uh has done this year and last year is impressive. I know they got knocked out in the first round. But their bodies of work have been very impressive and it's because kids have stayed. And um you know all of us uh are dealing with the same thing on a different level, whether it's in Waco, Texas or in the Bronx, New York, because there's no feeling sorry for yourself. This is the business. Um, you have to adjust and, uh, your ability to raise money is just as important as drawing a baseline out of bounds play. So, uh, it's very, very interesting on, uh, the infrastructure of each university and uh, everybody now uh, is just sort of every day you're looking at the portal and you're hitting refresh. And it's, it's just an interesting time, to say the least. Coach, um, NC State is the lone double-digit seed. And, I mean, they've, they've been playing you know, seemingly every day since last last. Monday, you know, when the ACC tournament started Tuesday uh, and had to roll right on through for the last couple weeks. Uh, one, how have they been able to get through and still win with having to play more than everybody else that they're going to play? And two, DJ Burns, you don't see guys like him in college basketball much anymore. The Oliver Millers of the world, uh, you know, uh, and, and big baby Davises are gone, but he is a matchup nightmare for everybody. <laughs> so we have, we played him when he was at Wintour. And, uh, it was one of the awesome, it was, I went, we were banged up. I went five guards. <laughs> if you ever get a chance, uh, there's highlights in that game where he had to come out and guard our kid, you know, Austin Williams, who had, a, who had 20 plus against you guys in the first round. He was the best player on our team. We, 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 we got it to two with like three and a half left and we just could not stop him. And, uh, Seeing him on this stage, uh, it's impressive how well he's played and how good he looks. So, tip my hat uh, to NC State because they've been on a roll. And when you get on this type of heater, uh, you know, it's like anything. You, it becomes second nature. Uh, you, you think you're going to win. So, NC State is a hot team right now. And in college basketball, uh, that's a huge thing. Coach, uh, we were just talking about Iowa State with a, a previous guest, and uh, Lipsy is just a fantastic player. Otzelberger is a terrific coach. I mean, they are deep. They play great defense. I don't want to steal your thunder here, but what have been your thoughts on the Cyclones and, and what you've seen from them? Uh, you know, I think, listen, uh, you're looking at 
in the matchup, the best defense versus the best offense in the country. And it's, uh, you know, the the basic game is going to come down to, uh, honestly, like if you, if you look at the first half, Washington State gave everything Iowa State could handle. Um, but I think the toughness just wore down, right? And you look at this, this matchup, and I think it's very, very intriguing to me. And uh, because Illinois can really score, I think Iowa State's the toughest, uh, or I would say healthiest slash toughest. When Houston, you know, Houston is, is up there too, uh, I think UConn is the best of all worlds. Um, but I think Iowa State has just been, uh, they're the team in this matchup that at the end, it could be a three, four point win, but it'll be just because Iowa State's so tough. How much does the transfer portal opening the same week of the NCAA tournament um, create even more confusion, or is it for as a coach like yourself who's trying to put something together, is it good? I, I think in general, um, I, I, I look, this is my idea for us to save, save, save ourselves here. Anybody that comes to Manhattan College, uh, look, the, the, the cat's out of the bag. So we we have to reverse engineer our, our, our survival at our level. So I got, I got guys next year, hopefully next year, not this year, but next year, um, we'll go, we'll, we'll be that, you know, the big East ACC type of player, right. In our program. So how do I combat that? Well, I, I I'm a businessman and I, I think long and hard, uh, we have to go to a model where, you know, there's buyouts. So if school X wants to come into Manhattan or our type of level, go look at the, the guys that have left the Mac this year. Kids started at Georgia, leading scorer at Georgia, uh, leading scorer at Florida, leading scorer at Oklahoma. I mean, uh, in Richmond, Atlantic 10 player of the year. So uh, my thing is, and uh, you know, is let's just, let's just create, let's, Let's not complain. Whoever likes to complain in life, we need to adjust. Okay? So the NCAA has not put any restrictions in. We have to adjust. So mm-hmm. let's sign Let's sign contracts with guys. Let's, play, let's pay them a minimal of the NIL. Let's go out and raise that money. Look, the CEO of American Express is the chairman of our board. Let's do this. Let's raise some money. Let's go do it. And then we're everyone that comes in and wants to take a guy off of Manhattan, you're going to have to pay the buyout. They you do it in Europe. Yep. They do it in Europe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why are we sitting back waiting for some invisible leader to come show up and tell us what to do? This system has crumbled in front of our eyes. So let's adjust and not complain. I can't stand when people play the victim. Oh, well, it's this, it's that. I said to one coach this morning, he said, hey, my man, I can't do this at 7.30 in the morning. We need to adjust. We need to adjust. He said, what do you mean? I said, listen, let's just all of us go to our general counsel, meet with them and say, look, we're signing contracts. And we, have to need, we need to figure this out. Because if we sign the contracts and we pay these guys, even minimum, like minimal 30, 40,000, right? 30 grand. Right, uh, they get the buyout. At least now, I, I with a hundred grand, I have cap to go get some players. But for us to all sit here with, oh, it's not going to hurt us. It's not. It's not going to affect John Gallagher because he's a good Irishman. Is insanity. <laughs> I could be as good of a guy and as Irish as you could want, but guess what, buddy? At the end of the day, their families, and they should. If a kid can go get two fifty, three hundred, we're not getting there. Mm-hmm. We're, I, I know what the Big Twelve is paying guys. Okay, 
I'm very intimate. I know what the ACC. I know what the Big East. The numbers are flowing around. I mean, I sat on my couch late last night and thought, who five years ago, whoever would have thought this? I mean, Johnny Manziel would have stayed in college longer. And, and been able to do it legally. I mean, if, you, if you're pissed off, if you, think about this. If the first thing that should happen in all the sports is Reggie Bush should get the Heisman back. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> listen, let's, let's clean it all up at the same time. You mentioned, I mean, the, you mentioned the Mac, by the way, uh, our, uh, Ray J. Jen- Dennis, who was very important for Baylor from Toledo. Yeah, I mean, look, look, Toledo, uh, go look at the guys they've lost. Go look at the, I mean, it, 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 at the end of the day, the teams at the mid major level that kept their roster had the best NLI per- packages. Let me repeat this for everybody out there. The best. Mid-major teams with the best NIL package. I, my old neighborhood at Hartford, I have to hit these guys up because they want to see the, 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 the old school guy do well. Well, if you want to see me do well, I need to raise money. It's just the only way that we can move. I don't have, I, we're just doing it now. We're forming it now. We're behind. But now that I'm doing more research on it, I mean, it's sophisticated. It's 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 very. I mean, go look at what how these high uh, high level players are signing. I mean, these deals. I just think we have to be transparent about it. Let's get transparent about where we're headed as a Division One organization. You know. Um, there's not a lot of coaches that are on these committees that make these decisions. And there, there's, there's probably several good reasons for that. But it would, uh, I think, if you got a couple on there, because coaches, as you know, because you are, you just gave us one, you are problem solvers by nature. That's your, that's your job is to, this is going wrong. How do we make it go right? And I think sometimes administrators are not necessarily that because they have problem solvers that work for them, right? So then they're supposed to come forward. And do you think more coaches should be on some of these committees when they're trying to figure these things out and not wait for this invisible leader, as you said, to come along? Just think, listen, I respect everyone at the NCAA. They're trying their best. No one's not saying they're trying their best, but it's – it's crumbling before our eyes. I mean, it is. It, it, it's scary. Uh, so I think the only way we save what we possibly can save is if we all collaborate, if we all come together. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, you, you look at uh, the system and you look at the institution and – Everyone's saying, "Oh, it's, let's call it what it is. It's pay for play." I, you know, it's it's. Well, I, I don't care what you call it. Right? We're not doing anything right now, so we're moving forward. We're trying to, but I know this: whatever you want to call it, right? Guys are getting paid to play, right? Whether you think it's right or wrong, I don't care. It's fact. So let's get rules in place and let's get a system in place so the Manhattan colleges of the world uh, can survive. And that's my side. Like our school will be fine, but like I'm a competitive guy. So I say to myself, all right, at Hartford, I would have had seven or eight guys over a four year period playing the Big East or ACC that would have been garnering over, you know, six figures. Well, we could, you know, how would I survive that? Well, I'm in this, I'm in Manhattan. I have guys right now, a year from today, that will be garnering that kind of money. Go look at some of the guys that have gone to places. I mean, I know stories of the le- the, the, the leveraging that kids are doing. Or I should say, kids, young men are doing, and they're smart. Hey, I'm getting this from this. I'm making a decision. If you give me a hundred more, I'll come to you. They're, hey, listen, they're playing the game. 
but let's not let's not let's not act like it's not happening. John, um, do you think the NCAA cares about? And and please don't take this wrong. We love you, and what you did at Hartford was fantastic, and what you're going to do at Manhattan. Yes among the others that are the mid-majors, which to me is what makes this, especially the first week of the NCAA tournament, so special. You hear Greg Sankey make a comment about uh, the tournament, that things are changing, whatever. Do, do, do the, the Max and where you are and other conferences, is there like a common thread among the mid-majors and others that are like, screw you, man? Uh, because it just seemed like everyone's gobbling up like Monopoly-type squares. So here is what I think. I think Greg's a really smart guy. I met him. I met him a few times. Uh, he's, a, he's a very, very sharp guy. He's fighting for his schools. Yeah. Right. He's doing his job. Right. At the end of the day, uh, if uh, if you don't have a, a a game, meaning it's the NCAA, you don't have the NCAA tournament, then what do you have? We're not football. All right. They went from bowl games to four teams to now 12 or 16, whatever they landed on. Right. That's a different system that they don't even, they're not even monitored by the NCAA. Right. So you want uh, to add more teams. Okay. You want to add more teams. You want to, you want to take bids away at the end of the day. It hurts your product nationally okay because at the end of the day right we just said it it, you got your top teams that are still there you know i hear these you know tom Izzo, who's a great mentor you know mentor to all of us through you know watching all his films and tapes but it, it it's so shallow what he said i mean you're not protecting the game and uh why aren't you protecting the game well you're, you're, you're limiting these opportunities for kids at a mid-major level that because, look, you know, the, the old great line is uh, Texas A&M was furious one year. And their assistant AD and AD were at the Final Four. I'll never forget this line. And they're, you know, complaining about it. Somebody said to them, well, I'll have Kentucky beat St. Peter's night. <laughs> you know, if you want to have your art, well, go win the game. So my point is, is Oakland beating Kentucky and all these upsets you see throughout the history of college sports, isn't it fun? Doesn't that make a good weekend? Doesn't that make – so if it, there's no value in it, then you, you should kick it out. But I think there's great value in it. I think people like it. Uh, and that's why we are different than college football. I, there's never in the history of the world will you see St. Peter's or a team like that in football beat Alabama. It's not happening. It's not, that's what makes this that weekend so special. Speaking of which, and I mentioned this off the top again, John Gallagher, head coach at Manhattan with us on 365 Sports, a very good friend of the show from his days at Hartford too. Uh, with all of the higher seeds, one, two, threes, and fours, and then a 5-6, and then whatever, what is it, a 12. Uh, will there – NC State is like against Cinderella. Do you feel like this might be as competitive the next two to four days as we've seen in quite some time at the six, Sweet 16 level? Um, I do. I, l- listen, these games – are they will be like I think this weekend will be the best weekend of basketball. Okay. I really do. Mm-hmm. I think it'll be like you know. I think this is even the San Diego State UConn game, right? I think you got you got matchups across the board. They're just fascinating, and uh, it's basketball. Like I, I I I still go back to waking up and saying I'm a college basketball coach. This is fun, all right? And the people that play the victim in life just get, you lose your power. So let's just go out and work. That's what I think those 16 teams have done the best of. They've avoided distractions. 
all of them have avoided distractions. So I tip my hat to them. Last thing, I know you got to go. Was the Houston A&M game beautiful? Or was it, like I even said on Monday's show, Gangs of New York, and there were going to be 75 free throws shot. How would you describe that game? Because I loved it. Uh, <laughs> so, for, from a guy from Philly, yeah, that was, to me, it was artwork. There you go. <laughs> there you go. It was, it was like a beautiful... Uh, I'm not just. It, it, it had a. Uh, it had great beauty to it. I agree. I think we all agree. It, it was fantastic. And you are, John. Uh, we have an open invitation for you next week if uh, we can talk Final Four. We're in, man. Right. Next week, let's do it. Final Four preview. And uh, we'll break down the game. Thank you so much. I'll be in touch earlier than I was today. It's John Gallagher, our great friend, Manhattan. College, uh, Manhattan University, the basketball coach with us. I, I love uh, 